we've seen that we could specify a single element in a sequence by providing an integer index and it could be either a positive or negative value and that's within square brackets but we can actually specify multiple elements using what is known as a slice so let's talk about slices and to obtain a slice instead of writing a single integer index within the brackets we specify two or three integers and they're separated by a colon and for now we'll just talk about the two integer form and when I say integer I mean any expression that returns an integer the template for creating a slice is we give the identifier for a sequence or maybe some expression that returns a sequence and then within square brackets we give an integer start value a colon and then an integer value we'll call the stop value. The start value corresponds to the index of the first element of the slice and it has a default value as we'll see in a bit of zero. The stop value is the index of the next to last element of the slice and what we mean by the next to last element of the slice is if we have the sequence the individual element with that stop value that is not included in the slice the default value for the stop is the length of the sequence these start and stop values can be either positive or negative. Let's demonstrate the use of slices by first creating a string with six characters. Let's go with hello with an exclamation point. And let's take a few slices of this. Let's cut out the first and last character. If we start offset one from the beginning and go up to, but don't include an index of five, then we get the middle four letters E L L O so we can construct a new string using a portion of S with an expression like this let's go with the capital letter Y plus a slice of this string S with offset one from the beginning going up to but not including an index of five and let's concatenate that with the lowercase w and now we get yellow these slices don't affect the original sequence and we can mix positive and negative indices in a slice and often we want to do something with the last element of a sequence but we don't want to have to keep track of the length so we could use minus one to indicate the last element and let's write this hello string again but let's be less emphatic about it let's cut out the exclamation point and replace that with a period so we could write string s let's start at the very beginning with an index of zero will go up to but not include the last character of the sequence or of the string and we'll accomplish this by putting the stop value as minus one and now since we've cut out the exclamation point let's add back in a period and then we get hello with a period I said the default start value was zero so we could actually write this a little more simply we could just leave that start value blank have a colon and then minus one to omit the last character and concatenate that with a period and we again get hello with a period and note that the spaces that I'm putting around the colon aren't important we could write s the colon immediately minus one and then concatenate that with a period if we want to cut out the first element of a sequence we could do that as the following demonstrates let's take the capital letter J and concatenate that to the string after the first character has been chopped off so we'll start with an offset one from the beginning of the string and then we'll go up to the length of the string for the stop index and then we get jello but I said the stop value has a default equal to the length of the sequence so we could simply write this instead there's the capital J concatenated with the string where we have a slice that starts with an offset of one from the beginning and then just goes up to the default value which is the length of the string 
That'll give us the last character, or the last element in the sequence. And there we get the same thing. We've seen before when working with lists that if we give an index that's out of range, a positive index that goes beyond the last valid index for the list, then we get an error. Well, the same holds true with strings and tuples. If we have this six character string s but give an index of 100, well, we get an error. And we also get errors if we have negative indices that are out of bounds. So if I had s with an index of minus 100, this also generates an error. But when it comes to slices, out of range values don't produce an error. And the following gives us everything from the string except the first character. So we'll say start with a start value that's offset 1 from the beginning, but go up to 100, but don't include 100. Well, the string isn't even that long, but we don't get an error. We just get the second character on up to the end. And this works with negative indices as well. We could write s, start with a value of minus 100. Well, since the string is only six characters long, we'll start at the very beginning. And let's go up to, but don't include, the last character. And now we just get hello without the exclamation point. If the start value and the stop value correspond to the same element, then the slice doesn't return any elements. For example, the second character of the string s is e. So if we have s with a slice starting from e going up to but not including the e, then we get an empty string. But it's not so obvious if we start using negative indices. To demonstrate this, let's just recall that s with an index of minus 5 also corresponds to that e. So if we write s taking a slice starting with an index of 1 going up to, but not including an index of minus 5, then we can get the empty string, because both the 1 and the minus 5 correspond to the same element. And we could demonstrate this with just positive values. It's a little bit more clear if we have s starting from 5 and then going to a stop value of 1. Since the start is greater than or beyond the stop value, it's a little bit more clear that we'll get the empty string. In this case, no characters are returned. We'll stop there, and in the next video, we'll continue our discussion of slices.